my name is Chen and welcome to the last video of the CIE Paper 6 Alternatives to Practical series. Today we'll talk about drawing graphs, experimental methodology, as well as calculations. So let's get started. So first, let's start with this question on the reaction between car calcium carbonate as well as dilute hydrochloric acid. The student uses a measuring cylinder to place 25 cm cube of acid into a conical flask and she sets it up. Remember that this setup here we have is a downward delivery setup to collect gases. Next, the student removes the stopper from the conical flask and she adds calcium carbonate to conical flask, replaces the stopper and starts the stopwatch. She measures the volume of gas every 30 seconds for five minutes and records these volumes in table 3.1. Suggest another method of collecting gas. And remember that aside from downward delivery, we also have something called a gas syringe, which is shown in this diagram here, that we can use to measure the volume of gas produced in a reaction. The gas will push the plunger to a certain extent, and we can take the reading here to know how much gas is being produced in the reaction. And so I'm going to write here gas syringe for my other method. Next, to measure hydrochloric acid accurately, I want 25 cm cube of it accurately. I'm going to use a volumetric pipette. What this is, is a piece of equipment that looks like this. I'm sure most of us have used it before with a very long end, and this has to connect to a rubber bulb that we squeeze to suck in the liquid to a certain point. Once you maybe, um, I'll have a remark here as well to tell you how much liquid it measures, and we simply drop the liquid, and this gives us a very accurate amount of the liquid. Suggest how the student knows when the reaction is finished. Well, in this reaction, you notice that there's a gas being produced, right? So when the fizzing stops, of course, we know that the reaction has stopped because carbon dioxide gas is no longer being produced. So when the fizzing stops, the reaction is finished. Next, we have a student's notebook that tells us calcium carbonate is a white solid, and it's added to hydrochloric acid. It fizzes. When the reaction stops, there is a solid and some liquid in the flask. Remember that the reaction between calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid will produce calcium chloride and carbon dioxide and water. The liquid is basically calcium, carbonate, uh, calcium chloride solution, and the gas is carbon dioxide gas. So we know from this uh, from the notebook that there is solid left over, meaning that in this reaction here, we have the calcium chloride solution, as well as some leftover calcium carbonate, meaning that the calcium carbonate must be in excess. So we know that. Solid calcium carbonate is in excess as it remains in the flask. Carbonate is in excess as it remains. Sorry about the software update thing. Now we're going to take readings at the 60 and 150 seconds. At 60 seconds, you see this inverted measuring cylinder shows a scale where there are 10 increments between a reading of 20. So I'm gonna do 20 divided by 10 for each increment, which gives us two, meaning that each increment yeah, goes up by two. So this large line here is 30, then we have 32, and then here it's 34 cm cube. Here we have 42, four, six, and this line is between 6 and 8, so it has to be 47 cm cube of gas. Therefore, I'm going to go down, and I'm going to write 34 and 47. 
Now, it's time to plot the graph of volume of gas against time. Remember, volume of gas is your vertical axis and the time is your x-axis. So, first, we'll take a look at the maximum values. This is your x, the volume at the time, and then the y is the volume of gas. So, x goes up to 300, y goes up to 51, or presumably somewhere near 51. So let's take a look at the graph that we're, the graph paper that we're provided with. First, label the y-axis as volume of gas in cm cube. Remember, it goes up to 51. So I'm going to go 0, then 10, 20, 30, 40, and then 50 so that the top here will be 55, but I don't need to write that. Now for my x-axis, I have the time in seconds goes up to 300, and you can see here I was with one, two, three, four, five um, increments. So 300 divided by five, 60. So I'm going up in 60s. 60, 120, 180, 240, and 300. Then we simply have to plot all the points. Remember, first we have 0, 0, 30, 10, 60, 34. So I'm going to plot those. 0, 0, 30, 10, 60, 34, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then we have 90, 40, 120, 44, 150, 47, so 40, 44, 47, 40, 44, and then 47, and then for 180, it's 41. That's obviously anomalous, and then our other points goes from 50, and then the maximum is 51 for the remaining points. Okay, so your graph, it should go through all the points, but don't draw a zigzag line that goes like this, okay? This will score you nothing. It, it technically uh, doesn't really matter what line you draw as uh, you're only awarded points for the axis the scale as well as plotting the points correctly, but it's good to try to draw a line that fits as many points as possible in one go. And stop right here. Yeah, so roughly something like this. And you're going to circle the anomalous point as asked here. So I'm going to circle 180, and notice how the next part is about how it, the rate of reaction changes throughout the course of the reaction. We can see that initial rate of reaction is greatest as the line is steepest at the beginning. You see how it's really steep, and then the slope gets less steep, meaning that the rate of reaction gradually decreases. Let me go erase all these lines. We can start by talking about how initial rate of reaction is greatest as the line is steepest. And following that, rate of reaction decreases throughout the course of the reaction as the line gets less steep, as line becomes less steep. For our final part, we're going to draw a line F in which the reaction is performed at a higher temperature, but using same amounts of calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. Now I'm gonna use blue to show you the new line which is even steeper as it's faster. So it's above the original line, but we 
slope, uh, we plateau at the same point because we use the same amount of reactants to start with, and then label this line F as I'm instructed to in the question. Last but not least, we're gonna do the physics part on calculations. Simply use your ruler to measure the line D, the diameter, which uh, I have done already, it gives me five cm, roughly. Remember to include the point zero, okay? Because it says in your 0 0.1. And now we're going to go to the next part and talk about how it's important to measure the wooden blocks parallel before measuring the diameter of the beaker. So in this experiment, the student's trying to measure the diameter of the beaker using two wooden blocks as this distance here. So that's basically in the next part of the question where you're asked out, draw a double-headed arrow. And you need to talk about why the blocks have to be parallel so that the distance doesn't change or the distance is the same to ensure that distance is the same. And the height, of course, we're going to measure h right here using our ruler, which should give us around 7.2 as it's stated to near 0.1. So you need the decimal place, one decimal place, and 7.2. And to calculate the external volume, you're going to do 0 0.79 times d squared h equals 0 0.79 times, remember d is 5 cm, so 5 squared times h, 7.2, which should give me around 142 cm cubed. You could also put one decimal place if you'd like, which could be 142.2, but it's okay to include your answer to three significant figures as a standard rule of thumb. So I'd go with 3SF if I'm not sure. Lastly, we're going to measure the internal volume of the beaker using the measuring cylinder. So we fill the uh, beaker with liquid first, pour the liquid into the measuring cylinder so that we get the amount of liquid uh, or we get the internal volume of the beaker. And this should give us around, you can see from the scale here, it's 110 to 130. Again, it goes up in twos. So it should be 110, 112, 114, 115 cm cubed. Next, we're going to do V exterior minus V interior, which equals to 142 minus 115, 142, which should give us around 27 cm cubed. And two sources of error. So first, remember that exterior, the beaker is not really a perfect cylinder. So beaker, not a perfect cylinder, therefore the calculation is slightly flawed as it's meant for a perfect cylinder. And the internal volume may be skewed because we have transfer losses. The transfer errors as some liquid will be spilt or some liquid remains on the beaker. And that's pretty much it for the last part of the Paper 6 series. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for any for my future videos and suggest any, uh, if you can feel free to suggest any uh, topic that you want to do or any kind of content you want me to demonstrate, I'd be more than happy to hear from you guys. As usual, comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you very much.